Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing factorization of polynomials over a field. Okay, so, uh, we're currently in the process of trying to understand when a degree 2 or degree 3 polynomial is going to be reducible and when it's going to be irreducible. And what we've agreed on so far is that a polynomial will be reducible if it's degree 2 or 3, if and only if it has a degree 1 polynomial as a divisor. Okay, so if and only if it can be split into a product where one of those uh, polynomials that's in the product is going to be a degree 1 polynomial. Okay, so what we're now going to do is show a theorem which is going to give us a condition for a polynomial uh, in a ring of polynomials over a field to have a divisor uh, which is a polynomial of degree 1, to have a degree 1 polynomial as a divisor. Okay, so I've started writing this out here. Uh, so theorem, let p of x be a polynomial uh, from our ring of polynomials uh, with coefficients in the field, capital F. Okay, and the theorem is that it will have a divisor of degree 1. Okay, so how shall I write this quick? So p of x uh, will have uh, a degree 1 divisor. Okay, so I'll just put deg for degree, degree 1 divisor, and it's an if and only if condition, so if and only if, okay, there exists some element of the field, there exists some alpha which is an element of the field, okay, so the field which we're using as our coefficient ring uh, in this ring of polynomials, f adjoin x here, okay, uh, such that if you evaluate the polynomial, okay, uh, p of x at alpha, the answer is zero. So you're applying the um, evaluation homomorphism, what we could denote phi sub alpha here, on p of x, okay, and you'll get zero. Now, this is the unusual way of writing this. This, if you like, is the rigorous way of writing it. Uh, the way that people would more normally write this is just putting p evaluated at alpha needs to equal zero. This is to remind you that, strictly speaking, what we are doing is we are applying a homomorphism from uh, the ring of polynomials over the field into the field itself, okay, where we map any polynomial onto what that polynomial evaluated at alpha is, i.e. we replace the x's uh, with alphas, okay, and it, it goes from just being a symbol where we've got uh, coefficients from the field uh, next to or in front of powers of x with plus signs in between to actually all of those multiplications and those powers and those additions meaning something in the field, capital F. Okay, right. Uh, so, this then is the important theorem that we want to prove, okay, that p of x will have a degree 1 divisor if and only if we can find some alpha such that if we evaluate the polynomial at that alpha we will get 0, okay. Uh, so, let's prove this. Uh, so let's start actually by proving the only if here, okay. Uh, so the only way for you to have a degree 1 divisor is, um, sorry, the only way for uh, this to be tr sorry no the only way for you to have a degree one divisor is if there is some alpha which is an element of the field such that if you evaluate the polynomial at that alpha you will get zero okay so let's start with the assumption that you have a degree one divisor and then let's show that you will always have some alpha is an element of the field such that if you apply the evaluation homomorphism for alpha on your polynomial you'll get zero Okay, so, starting here, I want to show that this is true, and then we'll do the backwards one. We'll show that if this is true, this is true. So we're going to start with this direction here, which is actually the only if in this portion here. Okay, so the only way for this to be true is if this is true. Okay, uh, so, um, let's assume that we do indeed have a degree 1 divisor. So let's say our polynomial p of x here okay, uh, can therefore be written as some polynomial q of x times a degree 1 polynomial, which is here a0 plus a1 times x. So here is my uh, degree 1 polynomial here, a0 plus a1 uh, times x there. Okay, what I now want to prove is that there is some alpha uh, which is an element of my field such that if I evaluate the polynomial p of x at alpha, I will get 0. 
Okay, so how am I going to do this? Well, uh, quite simply, I'm going to construct such an alpha. Okay, so I'm going to say make alpha the multiplicative inverse of a1 times the additive inverse of a0. Now, why can you always actually do this? Well, we need to prove that these two things exist. Well, of course, a1 is not equal to 0. If a1 was equal to 0, this wouldn't be a degree 1 polynomial. Okay, so the assumption that this was a degree 1 polynomial tells us that a1 was not equal to 0. Okay, so its multiplicative inverse, therefore, does exist. So 1 over a1 makes sense, okay, because we're working in a field. So all non-additive identity elements will have a multiplicative inverse. So that's fine. And, of course, a0, uh, all elements of a field will have an additive identity. So that's, sorry, have an additive additive inverse, so that's fine. Okay, so the additive inverse of a0, that makes total sense. So we can multiply those two elements together and get some other element in our field, and we can call that alpha. Now, I claim that if you then evaluate the polynomial p of x at this uh, alpha, that you will actually find that it's equal to zero, hence showing uh, that if you have a um, divisor of degree 1, that you do indeed have some alpha in the field, such that if you evaluate the polynomial at that alpha, you get 0. You have a root. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, so now let's evaluate our polynomial at uh, alpha. So let's apply the evaluation homomorphism, and I like to be utterly rigorous with this, so I'll show my evaluation homomorphism like so. So I'm applying my evaluation homomorphism, and the way I can work it out is I can apply it to the uh, right-hand side here. So I'll apply it to the right-hand side, and here's where I'll use the fact that it's a homomorphism, okay, of rings. It's a ring homomorphism. So what I can do here is um, I can break up the product, okay, because it's multiplicatively compatible. So I can break up this product into the evaluation homomorphism uh, it applied to q of x and then times it in now at the codomain ring and I might just write out what the domain and codomain of this evaluation homomorphism are going to be. The domain will of course be the uh, ring of polynomials over R and that should be a field. I do apologise we're working with a field. Of course our field is a ring uh, but we are working with a field so I'll put F there. Um, Okay, into our field capital F, and it's just going to work by taking any polynomial and evaluating it at alpha. Okay, uh, so here we'll be multiplying these answers together in the field. Okay, so phi uh, sub alpha of this polynomial here, which is a0 plus a1x, like so. Okay, so that's, we can do that only because we know that it is a ring homomorphism. And as I say, uh, if you're not familiar with the substitution or the evaluation homomorphism for polynomial rings, whatever you want to call it, I do have a video on this topic uh, further back in my playlist on ring theory. Okay, so now let's work this out. Now, we can't obviously work out what... Um, phi sub alpha of q of x is going to be, but we can work it out for here. So let's actually uh, do this. So uh, if we substitute in then alpha for x here, so this will become a0 plus, and now this plus has truly become a plus. It becomes a plus in the field. Okay, so this addition becomes addition in the field. So I'll colour in operations in the field in orange here. So it'll become addition in the field, and then we'll have a1 times in the field my alpha now, and my alpha will be the multiplicative inverse of a1 times, in the field, the additive inverse of a0. Okay, so all of this is, these operations are in the field. So, of course, we can now apply the fact that multiplication is associative. We can multiply a1 and its multiplicative inverse together to get 1, and then we'll just get a0 plus its additive inverse, and that will give us 0. So, when we evaluate this polynomial at alpha, it will map us onto at zero in the field. So this is the answer, zero in the field. And we know, of course, that whatever we get here, whatever the answer to phi sub alpha of q of x is in the field, it doesn't matter because we're multiplying it by zero. So the answer here is always going to equal zero. So indeed, uh, this polynomial p of x evaluated at alpha is going to equal zero, exactly as we said. So if your polynomial uh, has a degree 1 divisor, it is always possible to construct some alpha in your field uh, such that when you evaluate the polynomial at p of x at alpha, uh, you will uh, get 0, okay?
Excellent. Uh, now let's prove the other way round. So let's now go in this direction here, the pink direction, the backwards direction. Okay, so let's assume that we do have a root. Okay, we have some elements such that if we apply the evaluation homeomorphism phi sub alpha to p of x, we do in fact get zero. Let's prove from that that we are now going to be able to factorize our polynomial into another polynomial, quotient polynomial, times a degree one polynomial. Okay, so um, how are we going to do this? Well, I claim that if, let's say, alpha is our root, okay, so alpha is the element of the field such that if you evaluate the polynomial at alpha, so if you take phi sub alpha of p of x, you get zero, okay? Uh, now, I claim that um, the degree one polynomial that we can actually get as a divisor of our polynomial p of x is the polynomial x minus alpha. This is one of them, at least, okay? Of course, there will be others, and you can modify them. You can take the associates of this one. You can modify it by a unit, okay? But this is a nice, simple one. Now, of course, x minus alpha really means, this is the normal way that people would write it, but uh, it really means x plus the additive inverse of alpha. So you take the additive inverse of alpha, that will exist in the field, okay? And then you're looking at this polynomial where you've got 1 as the coefficient of x, okay? And then as your constant term, you've got the additive inverse of a0, okay? And I want to show that if alpha is a root of my polynomial, if when I evaluate the polynomial at alpha I get zero, uh, then this is going to be a divisor of my polynomial. So how can I do this? Well, here's where I use the fact that the ring of polynomials over the field capital F is actually a Euclidean domain, because it being a Euclidean domain means that there's going to be a Euclidean division algorithm. Okay, so it's possible for me to write my polynomial p of x then as some quotient polynomial q of x times this thing that I want to quotient out by, okay, which will be x plus the additive inverse of alpha. I'll write it out uh, in full here. Okay, so here's my x plus the additive inverse of alpha, and then plus another polynomial which will be the remainder polynomial. Okay, so because we are working with a Euclidean domain, which is the ring of polynomials over the field capital F, it's always possible to do this, and what is more, it's possible to do it so that the degree of the remainder polynomial is strictly less than the degree of the thing that you were attempting to divide out by, okay, quotient out by, um, and of course this has degree 1. So the degree of this is going to be strictly less than 1, which means that it must be a constant polynomial or 0, okay? So r of x can only be a constant polynomial of zero, so we might as well replace it just with r here, okay, to remind us that really it doesn't have uh, any non-zero coefficients in front of the actual important powers of x, okay? Now, I claim that we can actually go further with what this remainder here is. I claim that we can actually say it's the zero polynomial, and the reason is, just remember back to our evaluation homomorphism, and now think about evaluating the polynomial p of x. We know that the answer is zero, but we can now work it out using this. Okay, so we can apply the evaluation homomorphism to both sides here. Okay, so we can evaluate the polynomial p of x at alpha, and we know the answer is zero by assumption. Okay, but now we can apply it to the um, right-hand side here, and we know we have to get the same answer. We have to get zero. Okay, but because it's a ring homomorphism, it's additively compatible and multiplicatively compatible, so this will become um, phi uh, sub alpha evaluated at q of x here, times phi sub alpha uh, acting on x plus the additive inverse of alpha here, plus phi sub alpha of r, like so. Okay, where of course this addition here is now done in the field, and this multiplication is done in the field, okay, in the codomain of our evaluation homomorphism here. Okay, now, um, phi sub alpha of q of x, we don't know, neither do we really care what that actually is. What we do know, uh, and what is important, is what phi sub alpha of x plus the additive inverse of alpha is going to be. We're going to stick alpha in here. This addition will become addition in the field, whereas previously it was just addition in between the terms of the polynomial symbol. Okay, so now what it will become is alpha plus the additive inverse of alpha, where this addition is done in the field, and of course that will give us zero as the answer here. Okay, so this will become 
0. So then we'll be multiplying whatever this is in the field, so just some element of the field here, okay, which we might as well denote Q evaluated at alpha, okay, for me to use a bit more normal uh, notation here. Okay, um, Whatever that is, we don't care, uh, because when we multiply it by 0 in the field, we'll just get 0 back again, so this just becomes 0. And then this here, that's now going to have to be 0, okay, because if it was anything else, this equation wouldn't work, okay, if it was some other constant, it wouldn't work, so it has to be equal uh, to 0, okay, uh, which tells us that this polynomial R has to equal 0 because um, all constant polynomials will be taken to themselves by the evaluation homomorphism. Remember, the evaluation homomorphism doesn't change constant polynomials, so if it was a constant polynomial, it would just be taken to that constant in the uh, field capital F, okay, and that would break this equation. The equation wouldn't work uh, if it was anything but zero, so it must be the zero polynomial, basically. Okay, so the remainder must be zero, and hence take that bit away, we can write our polynomial P of X as this quotient polynomial times X plus the additive inverse of alpha, and this is of course a degree 1 polynomial, so our polynomial P of X does indeed have a degree 1 divisor. Okay, so excellent, we have indeed shown that this theorem is true. A polynomial will have a degree 1 divisor if and only if there exists some element of the field such that when you evaluate the polynomial at that element of the field, you get 0. Okay, so that now gives us a beautiful condition for a polynomial to be reducible if it is of degree 2 or of degree 3. Okay, uh, it will be reducible if it has a polynomial of degree 1 as a divisor, and therefore it must have a root. There must be some element of the field such that when you evaluate the polynomial uh, at that element of the field, you end up with 0. If that is not the case, then it cannot have a degree 1 divisor, and therefore it cannot be reducible, so it must be irreducible. So the irreducible polynomials of degree 2 and 3 are precisely those polynomials that do not have any roots in the field. Okay, There is no element of the field for which you can evaluate the polynomial at that element and get at 0. Okay, now note, uh, I'll repeat it again, I think I said this in the first video, uh, but if you uh, go to higher degree polynomials, so 4, 5, 6, you can't apply the same trick, because for instance with degree 4 polynomials, uh, it could be the case that um, you can split the polynomial down into a degree 2 polynomial multiplied by a degree 2 polynomial, in which case it wouldn't be irreducible, but it wouldn't need to have a degree 1 divisor to be reducible. Okay, so for higher degrees polynomials, this trick doesn't work for deciding whether a polynomial is reducible or irreducible. It only works for those low degree ones of degree 2 or 3. Okay, right, so we'll have a break here, and then I'll uh, tell you about one more important uh, theorem that comes from all of this in the next video.